Thank you. Thank you very much, my beloved family and friends here in the Fulbright Association. And I'm so happy to see so many of you here tonight. It is a special occasion. And I just told James that if he's in business still, uh, my father has left me some land and I'm going to need a house that, with a statement, I'm a woman, deal with it. So <laughs> I am before you here tonight. Um, and I cannot tell you how much this event tonight means to me. I arrived late last night to Washington, D.C. I spent the whole morning writing my speech, and I'll be flying back to Europe tonight because I have obligations uh, in Croatia tomorrow morning, and I have to continue working. But hopefully I'll be back sometime in January. So it is a privilege and a pleasure to stand before you while joining a distinguished family of Fulbright Lifetime Achievement Award laureates. And I do congratulate uh, my uh, co-honorees uh, tonight, uh, co-laureates, um, uh, and uh, I wish you all the best, both of you, in uh, your future work. And I'm looking forward to working with all of you here tonight, and in particular, dear President Schmitter and all of you, uh, dear board members. I hope that you can, we can do together a lot more to promote the Fulbright program. So I sincerely take, thank the Fulbright Association for this honor. I am humbled by this award, just as I am proud to be a Fulbright alumna, and as I am determined to continue to promote the values and principles of this program and our joint endeavors in our countries and around the world to promote our values. I was a girl born on the wrong side of the Iron Curtain when I started dreaming big. Together with my friends, all of them boys for that matter, I would lie down on the ground in the evening and gaze at the stars and the flickering lights of the aircraft flying high above in the sky, wishing they would take me away to those other places where people said the freedom of choice existed, where they said you could do whatever you wanted, where they said, you could say whatever you believed in without being persecuted. And where they said you could become whatever you wanted only if you worked hard enough. And I am proud tonight to dedicate this award both to my family and to my nation. First and foremost, to my mom and dad who sacrificed much of their own lives in order for me to have a life that they could never have imagined for themselves. And to my husband and my children for their relentless support and understanding throughout my life and career. My mom and dad could not be here tonight, but the Croatian media is, so I need to say, hvala mama, hvala tata. Thank you, mom, thank you, dad. You mean so much to me. And finally, to my nation, my beloved country of Croatia, not big in size or the number of population, but really big at heart, dreaming big, to my country that has invested in, v in me so much, to my precious people, who within a fraction of time when observed from the point of view of the history of mankind, have achieved so much having become an example of a successful, complex transition process and have yet to achieve so much more. I believe that tonight I need to express at least a little bit of what Fulbright has taught me, what it has contributed to this world, and how I have tried to give back. When I was filling out the paperwork for my Fulbright scholarship, I was at hospital in Croatia, taking care of my very difficult pregnancy. I had just returned from Canada due to some unfortunate circumstances, seven months before my posting ended. That is when I decided that the best way to change things around you is to begin changing them yourself. 
I decided to waste no time and applied for a Fulbright scholarship. Since the doctors would not allow me to have a laptop, my husband, who's sitting here in the audience, um, he was so kind enough to take my handwritten notes um, home and he typed them. At one point he said, are you sure you want to submit this? Because it sounds a little bit like science fiction to me. But unfortunately, come September 11, 2001, five months after my thesis proposal on asymmetric threats to national and international security had been submitted, unfortunately, it became a reality. I started writing my proposal for um, the Fulbright Scholarship by recounting my experience of a high school exchange uh, student when I was a senior at Los Alamos High School, one of the best times I had in my life, I have to say. Before I came to Los Alamos, I was afraid whether my peers would be prejudiced, whether they'd be suspicious or even demeaning of someone coming from a communist country. But the warm reception and the fact that they judged me not based on where I came from, not based on my background, but based on my personality, academic performance, and my personal ethics towards all of them, made me realize I had been the prejudiced one. It has taught me that in life, we always have to keep our mind open and be open to new ideas, new cultures, new worlds, new uh, and different ways of life and ready to dispel of our own prejudices or preconceptions in order to embrace a better today and a better tomorrow. This award inspires me not only to look back, but rather to reflect on the present and especially on the future. What we need today, maybe more than ever, is true leadership and vision. We need motivational leadership. Our world is being tested every day by discord, conflict, terrorism, mass migration, climate change. It is upon us to find the solutions to the challenges that we're facing within our countries, as well on the regional and global levels. We see this every day in the European Union, in our transatlantic relationship, and on the global level. Indeed, we have to shape today in order to have a better tomorrow. In facing the perils, but also in using the opportunities that stand before us, we have to remind ourselves that it is our values which define us most. Many books have been written on leadership and vision. I will try to present my own concept as the result of my Fulbright experience, but also of my working in different places in the world from my own country to the war zones of South Asia, most notably Afghanistan, that even as president, I visited for three times. Those of you who know me um, know that I'm quite fond of or even obsessed with the three Cs. Most specifically an initiative about connecting the Adriatic, Baltic, and Black Seas that I started with my Polish colleague a little bit more than four years ago, and that developed into a well-respected regional initiative aimed at erasing the physical and mental barriers and boundaries and differences of the so-called old and new Europe, of Europe's east and Europe's west. Well, I will also translate my idea of motivational leadership into three Cs, and a whole lot of other C's and other letters of the alphabet. Thus, I will concentrate on credibility, consistency, and courage. So firstly, to start with credibility. With a multitude of new and diverse threats and risks, challenges and challenging the resilience of our societies from both the outside and from within, credibility is pivotal. In Europe, and here in the United States. We have been discussing the issues of challenges of a multipolar world for quite some time. 
And after many discussions on this subject, it seems to me that the answer can be summarized in a single word, trust. Trust in ourselves, in our democratic institutions, in our friendship and alliances, and trust in our countries and our peoples. To earn trust, one has to keep one's word, integrity, self-respect, and respect for others. One has to be true to oneself and consistent, not just in words, but in deeds as well. In times of crisis, it is all too easy, sometimes even tempting, to abandon arrangements that we have relied upon for decades, to start looking for radically different solutions to the challenges that we face and search for new friends and allies or new ways that might seem like an easy, short-term resolution to our problems. But what then? Are we going to stand alone in this ever-changing, ever-shifting world? What we need is to refer back to unity and fellowship in protecting our common ideals, values, and principles, as well as our solidarity in facing hardship and our responsibility to future generations and to demonstrate our integrity internationally. To lose confidence in our way of life, in our friends and allies, the institutions we have been building for decades, and that the principles upon which those have been founded is precisely with those who think different, those who nourish different perspectives in the world, wish to achieve. Today's Europe is blessed by the fact that most countries of the continent, including Croatia, are members of the two most successful multilateral uh, institutions in history, the European Union and NATO. NATO has been the backbone of Europe's and the transatlantic security architecture for decades and has to live all of us here as such. The transatlantic bond remains the most important guarantee and added value to our security. We have to maintain it, and if we deem it necessary, replenish or rebuild it. Let me say this very clearly. The United States is pivotal in this regard. I'm well aware that we're not all equal in our contributions for multiple reasons. Not all of us perform at the same level of capabilities, but we all have to perform at the same level of commitment, credibility, and dedication. This is not a weakness, but our most important asset and the foundation of our society's resilience to face any possible challenges. An alliance of confident nations with shared values with interconnected societies that rely on each other and our mutual solidarity. Just as all the pieces of the same puzzle will not fit together in a whole if a single one is missing, so is our alliance weakened by suspicion or lack of commitment on part of any of its members. Our credibility in the eyes of our own citizens is equally important. We have to engage our populations as active participants and not passive bystanders of our uh, policies. We need to listen to them. All of us tend to underestimate our citizens and their ability and willingness to rally together and support the right common sense actions. Our own integrity, transparency, truthfulness, and realistic assessments matter as much as the results of our actions. Get out there. Don't be afraid to face your own citizens. Talk to them. And most importantly, as I have said already, listen to them. Show them respect. And don't be afraid to show your feelings. Show empathy over and over again. Don't let others persuade you that being close to the people is populism. All of us know here in this room what populism is and how dangerous it is. And the truth of the matter is that distancing oneself from the people gives rise to the worst kind of populist ideas and radical ideologies. Informed 
and confident citizens are the best and probably the only tool to counter and suppress the effects of fake news and other attempts to undermine the trust of our populations. This is the only way to build confident societies and citizens, but also future leaders. Trust in your people. Secondly, as leaders, we need to demonstrate consistency, consistency of our values and of our actions. No matter what office we occupy or what role we play at any given moment. And do not allow others, nor yourself, to convince you that the restraints of your executive powers restrict you in doing good for the whole of humanity. For instance, one of my goals in life, wherever and whatever I did officially, has always been to empower women. A successful and bright future cannot be achieved by disregarding more than half of our population. In the 21st century, we cannot allow We cannot allow that women are still unequal. Even though we have accomplished so much discrimination and abuse of women and girls and denial of their rights is still widespread. That applies to female politicians as well as to all women, no matter where they come from, how old they are or what position they hold. However, please do not treat women only as victims or an underrepresented minority. Women are a power source and agents of change. Their political participation is crucial for democracy, good governance, and development. More women are needed in the maintenance of peace and security, in the prevention and resolution of conflicts and politics in general. When given full and equal access to resources and opportunities, and when included in decision making, women drive the world forward. Throughout my almost 30 year long career in public service, I have navigated through many glass labyrinths. I don't like to call them glass ceilings. I have been a strong and outspoken advocate for the rights and empowerment of women. And since my election as Croatia's first female president in 2015, I have continued to encourage, support, and empower women. Today, in addition to my responsibilities as president of Croatia, I'm honored to serve as the chair of the Council of Women World Leaders, an organization of 76 current and former directly elected women heads of state and government, which I hope will continue to grow. My biggest reward is when I receive a letter from a girl or a woman from Russia or Nepal that I have inspired them, that they can achieve whatever they have set out to do, regardless of their modest background. I celebrate the success of every Afghan girl, girl or woman as if it were my own children's success. Expanding networks of influential women is important not only for the purposes of sharing our unique experience and supporting one another in our careers and endeavors, but because these same networks encourage women and girls around the world to be ambitious and to become more active at all levels of political, social, and economic decision making. Women are a platform for better education development, and progress. Thirdly, when speaking about leadership, we cannot but speak of courage. Courage to embrace change, to bring about change, but also courage to change yourself. Courage to admit that you have made a mistake. Courage to try to make up for it. Courage to persevere even when your colleagues and the whole world are telling you that what you're attempting to do is a lost cause to begin with. There are no wrong ideas. There is only lack of ambition to fulfill them. Have courage to embrace fresh ideas and innovative solutions to advance our societies in a technologically advanced world. By 2030, smarter investments in cleaner energy, cities, food and water, use of farmland, 
and in cleaner industry could generate 65 million new jobs worldwide. As a mother, but also as a leader of a country with one of the cleanest and most beautiful sea, uh, seas in the world, the Adriatic Sea, I stand for and with such initiatives. It is about anticipating change and seeing far ahead. It is about getting our people and societies equipped and ready for the future. All political and other decisions have consequences, but one must be prepared to defend them with unwavering determination. Ultimately, I have to add another very, very big C to this speech, and that is Croatia. <laughs> my beloved country, my homeland. I must pay respect to all those throughout the centuries who have sacrificed themselves for our freedom. Croatia is where I come from, and Croatia is where my responsibilities lie right now. And to cut a long story short, from a war-torn country, we have developed into a country where the world's fastest electric car, designed by Croatian knowledge and Croatian minds, is produced. And there is so much more ahead of us, but only if we remain confident and ambitious. Finally, I guess everybody expects me to end with a piece of wisdom and some advice for all of you. And to end on a lighter note, let me make it another word that starts with the letter C, and that is cheesy. Sometimes we do need cheesy metaphors to which we can hang on to give us strength and courage to carry on. I love inspirational magnets that I keep on my fridge from Churchill's never, never, never give up to Marilyn Monroe's women who behave rarely make history. <laughs> when I was in the US at high school, in addition to my, this room is not a mess, it's my science project, I also had a famous inspirational poster which said, God, give me serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, courage to things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Well, what, from what, what I've learned from my life and my experience, it is ultimately up to us to figure out those differences on our own and to respect the differences that other um, have and that other um, point out to us. But what motivates me most, what keeps me going in the most dire of circumstances, is a piece of folk wisdom from the place where I was born. A place that is called Grobnik, uh, literally translated a graveyard. Because um, that place became a dead end for many a foreign armed force who tried to conquer us. So this is also a tribute to that place where I was born and where I grew up. Krepat manemolat, meaning I will die before I give up. It was later accepted by the local soccer team as their slogan, but I take it in the original meaning of something that the wise, modest, um, hardworking, and very brave and courageous people that make up my country and the place where I was born make. So to use a metaphor that is popular around here and um, close to all of you here, let me state this in another words. When life gives you lemons, don't go rushing to make lemonade. <laughs> it will only quench your thirst. Move on, persevere. And around some corner or another, you're bound to find something else perhaps some eggs, and you will make a beautiful lemon meringue pie <laughs> that will leave you fully satisfied. So life is ever-changing. It offers so many challenges, but also so many opportunities. Embrace them all and make them part of unique experience because to be able to enjoy the privileges of freedom and democracy you also have to have experienced downturns. Perhaps even you may have experienced how miserable life can be without freedom and security. 
So this is our common responsibility, to protect our values, to protect our way of life, to protect our future and the freedom of choice, the opportunities for everyone to lead and to become a leader. Thank you.